Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology. Today, we're going to be talking about the most common tumor to be found within the cranium. But first, a few things. If you like this video, please click the like button at the base of the screen. Also, please subscribe to Adventures in Neuropathology for additional videos. This video is meant for medical education purposes only. It is not meant to be used as medical advice. If you or a loved one have a question or a concern about your health, please talk to your doctor. Okay, let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about the most common tumor to be found within the cranium. And uh, this is a classic presentation. We have a middle-aged person who has a headache. Um, you do an MRI of the head and you can see um, after the person has been given contrast, um, that contrast will enhance in a, in a very irregular fashion. So in this particular uh, case, um, the uh, treating physicians felt like it was um, imperative to uh, get um, remove the tissue. Um, and the reason why In this particular case, the treating physicians decided to uh, remove this mass, um, and this is what it looked like. So the first thing that uh, we notice is there is a lot of red stuff up at the uh, top of the screen here, and there's pink stuff down here. Okay, so the red stuff at the top of the screen, this is all blood. Um, there's a few wispy little pink um, uh, areas here. This is a uh, fibrin and so fibrin helps the blood uh, clot and so um, this patient actually so fibrin is a substance within the blood that helps the blood clot um, the pink stuff down here this is um, brain tissue it's not very happy brain tissue but uh, we'll we'll talk about that in just a little bit I want to bring your attention to here there's a there's something that looks different here and also here so let's take a look we'll take a closer look here okay in these two areas the first area is going to be over here um, and I want to point out that the um, border between this um, lesion and the non-neoplastic brain tissue down here, this border is very, very distinct. It's very sharply demarcated, which is um, a classic feature of this abnormality. Again, we can see that there is a very distinct border between the, the brain and the lesion. Um, the lesion has uh, kind of an epithelioid look to it. So, so what do I mean by that epithelioid? Well, um, the, the cells have a very um, uh, plump, ample cytoplasm, um, and the uh, nuclei are, are very um, uh, round and big, i.e. they're not spindly, like something you would think of in a... Um, The nuclei are not spindly, uh, like something you would think of in a, uh, a more mesenchymal tumor. So this has a very epithelioid uh, type appearance to it uh, with a lot of mitotic activity. Okay, uh, and this other image over here in the inset, uh, there is uh, uh, blood vessels here. Um, and the, endothel the endothelial cells are not very happy. They're kind of big and, and plumped up. Um, and then here's tumor here and here. Um, and the tumor is kind of in and around the blood vessels. And this might explain why this patient had um, uh, this extensive amount of bleeding here. So this patient um, had headache and, and had an irregularly enhancing lesion and, which had a, a lot of blood in it. Um, and so we can see evidence of that here. Um, and this might explain why, because there's, um, um, there's tumor cells within the blood vessels here. Okay, so let's take another view. Here's a different area of this, of this um, uh, specimen. At the bottom of the screen, we can see that there's this pink stuff here. This is uh, brain tissue. It's not happy, but it's not neoplastic. And it's got quite a bit of gliosis to it um, because there's a tumor right next door, but um, it is not a neoplastic brain tissue. It's just very gliotic and unhappy. Uh, 
nicely delineated from the non-neoplastic tumor is, uh, sorry, delineated from the non-neoplastic brain is this is more of this tumor we can see that there's areas of necrosis there's bleeding um and so this tumor again it has kind of an epithelioid it has an epithelioid look to the cells let's take a closer uh, view in this area right here uh, this is a closer view we can see that uh, there's a lot of mitotic figures and again a very epithelioid appearance with um, plump ample cytoplasm and round to oval nuclei uh, that are well delineated from the uh, adjacent non-neoplastic brain tissue. And this is what the uh, this is what gliosis in the brain looks like. So there's tumor next door, and the uh, brain tissue that's lining this tumor is very upset about uh, this tumor being here. So um, there's a lot of gliosis, and you can make out the um, the uh, cytoplasm of astrocytes, which you are not supposed to see in a regular. Um, in regular brain tissue, you don't typically see the cytoplasm of astrocytes, but here we do. Um, and that is a re that's called reactive astrogliosis, uh, in that the brain is just not very happy in that there is some injury or some injurious stimulus uh, that is is making the brain react in a um, response to this injurious stimulus. Uh, and again, this tumor has a lot of mitotic figures, meaning that it's very proliferative. It's, um, it is proliferating a lot. It's just grow, 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 growing um, as it's pushing its way into the brain tissue. And so this is the classic appearance of a metastatic carcinoma uh, it, in which the carcinoma indicates that uh, the uh, tumor cells are arising, arising from a lining tissue. So think about something like the lining of the uh, urothelial tract or the lining of the GI tract. Um, and we can do different immunostains to identify where in the body uh, this most likely is coming from. Uh, because some um, persons will have a known lesion, say, in the liver, in the GI tract, or wherever, uh, and you can make the assumption that that's where it's uh, originating from. But sometimes um, people don't have a, a known diagnosis of a lesion somewhere else, and this might be the first presentation of it. Um, so it's important to be able to say where exactly it's coming from. However, in this situation, it's a very poorly differentiated carcinoma, and it's hard to say exactly where it's coming from just looking at the uh, morphology of it. So in this instance, we would have to do um, immunostains to identify where this carcinoma is coming from. Um, and different carcinomas from different areas of the body have a different immunophenotype that we can look at to see to see where it's most likely originating from. So the most common intracranial neoplasm uh, actually does not arise from the brain. Um, it arises from somewhere else and travels to the brain, i.e. metastasis. And this is a good example of um, a metastasis that originated from somewhere else, uh, got into the blood vessels, and then transplanted itself into the brain. Um, and this process is called metastasis. And this actually is the most common type of tumor that you're going to find within the uh, cranial vault. Um, the reason why I say that is the most common uh, primary lesion that you'll find within the cranial vault actually doesn't arise from the brain either. It arises from the covering surrounding the brains, and that's called a meningioma. And the most common tumor that actually does arise from the brain tissue doesn't arise from the neurons. It actually arises from the glial cells that surround and support and maintain the neurons, and those include astrocytes, oligodendroglial cells, and ependymal cells. All right, so this is our whirlwind tour of uh, metastatic carcinoma, uh, metastasis to the brain. If you like this video and you want to see more, please sub subscribe to Adventures in Neuropathology. Um, I will see you next time on Adventures in Neuropathology. Thank you.